In this video, we're going to talk about three tips that are going to get you Canada's visitor visa. Even getting the visitor visa is not easy these days. So we'll talk about three tips or three hacks. If you focus on those three points, you will definitely get the Canada's visitor visa without any problems. If you're interested, stay tuned. Okay guys, if you're new to this channel, before we begin this video, I want to make it very clear that I'm not an immigration consultant or lawyer and I'm uh, sharing these tips purely through my experiences. In the past, I actually helped my wife get the visitor visa before applying for the PR. So everyone said that it's almost impossible to get the visitor visa if you're married before applying the PR, but luckily she got it. Similarly, for my parents as well, they did not have any travel history, but still they got the visitor visa. And some time back, I also helped a friend who did not have any ties with Canada. So through this experience, I got to know three crucial points that we're going to talk about and we're starting right now. Okay, so the first point, convincing the visa officer that you leave Canada after your planned stay. When we say visit a visa, it obviously means that you're coming to Canada for the purpose of visiting, maybe for tourism purpose, maybe to meet a friend, a family member, or maybe for some other reason. So the most important and crucial points that visa officer would be looking for would be those factors that make him convinced that you will go back to your home country or wherever you're coming from, basically leave Canada after completing your stay. Now it's said that uh, the visa officers don't give too much time to visitor visa applications, maybe five or 10 minutes. So you should be producing those kind of documents that convince him or her in that ma matter that you have to go back to your home country after you, uh, after you visit Canada, maybe for one month or two months, if you're coming for one week, whatever. So how can you do that? Of course, with the help of some documents that can convince him or her that you will leave Canada after your stay. So let's say you're working in an organization when you're coming to Canada for one month, of course you'd be on leave. So you can actually provide a NOC certificate from the organization that yes, you don't have any, they don't have any problem uh, you going on for leave for one month and you'll be joining back after one month, two months, whatever is your, your, uh, your, your period of vacation. One of my friend's wife was actually studying in India. So she produced all her uh, university documents saying that, okay, she's in the mid of her study and she wants to visit her husband just for the purpose of recreation uh, because she hasn't been uh, with her husband for quite a while. So she wants to visit Canada. So if you're a student, you can do that. Maybe you have a property on your name. So you can say that, okay, fine, uh, this, I have this property in my name. And of course I have to take care of it. Maybe uh, you're not well or uh, your parents are not well, or maybe somebody in your family is not well, seriously ill. And uh, you know, you can frame your application uh, saying that, okay, my uh, parents or my family member is not well and I have to take care of him or her. So we will definitely come back after a stay of uh, one month. You cannot afford to live in Canada any longer. Maybe you have your own business. So you can say that, of course, I have to take care of my business. I'll be then, uh, going there for uh, you know whatever time, but I'll be coming back because I have to take care of my business. That's the foremost priority for me. Maybe you're a family of three or four people. So husband, wife and children. And maybe just for any particular reason, a husband wants to go to Canada so you can say that okay my kids are here my uh, wife is here so of course I would be coming back after visiting another family member or whatever reason you might have of uh, coming to Canada so all the documents around these reasons could be used to prove that yes you would definitely leave Canada after your stay all right now point number two a travel history so what do I mean by travel history do I mean just by traveling from one city to the another in your same country? Do I mean by traveling from one country to your neighboring country? Probably not. First of all, let's understand why is travel history actually important in any visitor visa that you have to apply. So travel history basically means that prior to coming to their country, you have been to some other country and yes, you came back in the given time. So you were not deported and uh, you know, you came back in the, within in the given time period of the visa. That's one reason. And the second reason being that the visa officer gets convinced that yes, you have been to 
any place in Europe, in uh, Australia, maybe in US, uh, maybe some other country. And yes, your documents were verified. You didn't have any criminal background, all of that. So, so when the other country has provided you the approval to visit them in the form of their visitor visa, so you were able to visit there. So that gives a sense of confidence that yes, the guy is not uh, fraudulent, is has not have got any criminal activities and have actually intends to go back to their uh, home country or wherever you're actually coming from. So now, for example, if you have an Indian passport and you're living in India as well, so should you go to Nepal or Bangladesh or Thailand and your travel history gets built up? Well, not exactly, because a lot of countries don't even need a visa for Indian passport holders. For example, Nepal, a lot of countries uh, might be providing on arrival visa, for example, Thailand. So if you even add those travel histories to your passport, those immigration stamps there, that might not add the value that you want uh, to be added for the purpose of uh, getting the Canadian or US visitor visa as well. So what I'm trying to say is that it helps that if you have visas of those countries where you might have uh, gone through a security check or maybe uh, you've submitted your documents, you've got the visa, after submitting your documents, not just on arrival or, e or even when there's no visa required. And also travel history is not a mandatory thing to have, but it's good to have and it would definitely add that confidence. So it's not like you should uh, plan a Euro trip and spend four or five lakh rupees uh, just for the sake of getting the visitor visa of Canada. But yes, it would definitely help. So if I use my personal example, my parents didn't have any travel history. They didn't go to uh, any country before getting the uh, Canadian visa, but they still got the visitor visa of Canada because probably the first reason was so strong that they would definitely go back to their home country after living for three, four months. Then another example about my wife, she also didn't have any travel history. So we planned it accordingly. Of course, we were planning to go to honeymoon after our marriage. So we planned to go to Europe. So she gets a couple of stamps there and she has a visa. Getting a Schengen visa, it's quite easy. It's unlike uh, the Canada or US visitor visa where they give you a visa for 10 years. They actually give you a visa of one week. If you say that, okay, we want to plan um, and go to any European country, let's say for three or four countries for one week or 10 days time, they'll only give you the visa for uh, maybe 10 days, maybe one month or two, three months, not more than that. Don't give you 10 years of visa. So it's pretty, easy to get the Schengen visa. So you have both examples in my case also, where my parents didn't have any travel history, they got the visa, uh, so it's also possible. And also my wife who didn't have any uh, travel history, we deliberately planned our trip accordingly so that we can build a travel history before applying the Canadian visa. Okay, I see this video is already eight minutes long. Initially I didn't thought it would be a long video, I thought it would be a pretty short video, but it's important to convey the right message to you. So the third point is actually about having enough money in your account. Now you would say, how much money? Nobody has an exact answer for that because there's no rule that has been defined around this area. So for example, for express entry, for PR, it's defined for one person, you should have, let's say 12 to 13,000 uh, Canadian dollars in your account. But for visitor visa, it's not defined anywhere. So what they actually want is that when you come here, you should be able to take care of your finances. You should not be lying around on the roads or on the stations. And then somebody else has to take care of you. Maybe you're a student and you have a sponsor, but even in that case, you should have some money in your account. And of course your sponsor should have, you know, a lot of money in his or her account to make sure that yes, you would be taken care while you're here in Canada, before applying the visa, you don't need a flight ticket or a hotel reservation, unlike Schengen visa. So of course, once you get the visa, you need to make sure that you do all those reservations. And of course, you need to book the flight tickets, return flight tickets. So of course, you need to have a decent amount of money in your account because uh, flight tickets to Canada are not cheap. So if you say that you have only one lakh rupees in your account, and uh, you'd come to Canada, you're just showing just that amount. Of course, that money would be gone only in booking the flight tickets. So that would not make sense. So of course, uh, you should have 
you know, decent amount of money. Again, I cannot quote the exact amount of money, but you should try to show as much as possible. If you have 10 lakhs, show 10 lakhs. If you have uh, 20 lakhs, show all the 20 lakhs. Don't say that, okay, I will show just two or three lakhs and I'll hide the others. There's no benefit. In fact, that would harm you. So it is very important that you show all that money, the liquid money that you have, um, you know, if you're showing that you have a car or you have some gold assets, that might not help. But yes, all the liquid money, maybe you have some mutual funds or, uh, you know, some FDs, everything can help. We just have to convince the visa officer that yes, you'll be able to take care of yourself while you are here in Canada. And of course, you'll be able to take care of the flight tickets and all the other things. All right, guys. So those were three golden rules. Three tips, three hacks, whatever you want to say. But yes, if you take care of those three points, then the chances of you getting the Canadian visitor visa will be very, very high. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And also, I regularly make these kinds of videos. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.